Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Wild at Heart Show, real, authentic, uncut here on USA Global TV and radio show for men, by men, about men. My name is Roland, and first of all, before we start, a happy new year, a happy 2023 to you, and I wish you all the best for this next 12 months. Yeah, uh, the first show in this year, um, Wild at Heart, um, and I'm very happy that we refreshed a little bit of panelists. So uh, the topic today is which values mean the most to men? I think it's a very, very important topic because values are, how to say, at the bottom line, or it's 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 the basic of what, what about, about our thinking, about our belief system, about what we're doing, about our actions, about our attitudes. So today we're talking about values, which male values mean most to men. And for those of you who are joining us the first time, I don't do this by myself. Um, I'm just the creator, the moderator, the host of the show, because I'm my background uh, besides my training business, consulting business. I dedicate my life to support men, um, doing a lot of men's world work. And last year, in I guess in March, we started with Wild at Heart to bring this to a broader audience. So we have, I'm not doing it alone. We have a panelist are here of different men with different backgrounds, different ages, different religions. And for those of you who joined the show, all the shows last year or part of it, they will find out that we have a new member I will uh, introduce shortly. But before I uh, introduce the members, please go to our website. It's called bonfiretalks.com. On the website, you first of all, you will get all the details of our panelists. Uh, for the new panelists, we will update it shortly. But you will also find all recordings of the previous show when you missed one or you want to see, hear it again. So. On bonfiredogs.com, you will find all the recordings of all the previous shows and more information. But let's get started and let's welcome our first panelist, my dear friend from Poland. We just had a show two hours ago, which we really enjoyed. Uh, do you have show the environmental show? Let's welcome Marcin. Hi, Roland. Hi, everyone. Nice to be here again. Hi, great to have you back on the show and great to see you again today for our second show together, Marcin. Welcome from Poland. Yeah, our next panelist is from the UK. Uh, Big Scott is in the house again. Big Scott. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yo, yo, yo. Ooh, Happy New doing? Year. Happy New Year, man. How are you doing? Schönes Weihnachten. Schöne Weihnachten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Big Scott, I don't, know, I don't know if it's fake news or not. Uh, but there's a, a very rich couple in Switzerland. They are um, collecting money to buy the, the license or how you call it, the rights, the music rights on the last Christmas song from them. Okay. And then they will, how to say it, give it away from the market so they don't hear it anymore when they go to any shopping center. Yeah. So really, they're, they're buy it and money. burn it. Yeah. Buy yeah, it and the, burn the, it. The, yeah. buy, the, buy the song and burn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over here we have a thing called Whamageddon, and it's how long can you get into December before you hear Wham? And I got to the 24th. I had to nip into a shop to get something, and it came on as soon as I came in the bloody door. I was like, oh, yeah. Well, anyway, I tell Aaron, Mariah Carey. It's like you know, it's like a candy. When you love candy, it's nice, but you don't have too much candy, it's too much. Yeah. But anyway, gentlemen, we have a new panelist um uh, that's joining our show, and I'm very happy to bring some new flavor. Are some new insights, a different, maybe a different point of view. Let's welcome from Houston, Texas, in the USA. Let's welcome Red. Yo, yo, yo. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year Red. Happy New Year. Hey, great day for the show, Red. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Well, I'm honored to be here, so I'm looking very much forward to connecting with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So, well, the topic is which values mean the most to man. So maybe maybe we have to describe values. What are values? Marcin, I know you're an expert on this, you're, you're a coach. Maybe you want to describe for audience what, what does value mean? So we're talking about the same term terms. <laughs> Before yeah, I would love to be. I would love to be an expert uh, in values, <laughs> but I think everyone needs to carve their own path in it. Uh, if we see at the definitions, uh, value is something that we cherish, that we care very much for. It's something that we um, hmm, try to achieve, but it's usually so ideal that the achieving of that is almost impossible. But we just strive to. Uh, pursue the path to us the value like this so the value most commonly known is a family uh, family as a value or maybe it will be freedom as a value or friendship as a value so usually there are terms uh, they can apply to um, individual situation or to the society to the world even uh, so depending on uh, which values are more important and less important in our lives and in our behavior uh, we can even uh, diagnose and check and and just find out um, what kind of um, values ladder do we have because there is uh, some kind of an order if you just put all your values in a row and then decide which one will be the first and Will, which will, will be the second our mind map of values do you possess and uh, usually we do not think about them up until uh, the very important part of our lives so in big decisions we tend to try to uh, follow our values or in some dilemmas or maybe in a situation when something bad happened and then we try to stick to our values just to be um, in line with our conscious so values it's very very important very interesting topic also and many companies are interested in uh, shared values so it not about money it's about something else that will motivate people towards work in the same company so you can see in many uh, res at many reception desks and in, in the lobbies in fys uh, these values are colorful and placed on the wall in some kind of a mural but do the employees really follow them hmm that's the open question Absolutely, absolutely. And I think sometimes, you know, sometimes values are very abstract words like love or independency or loyalty. And I would say to somebody, what is a value? I say, when, it, when it's not really esteemed by somebody else, yeah, when it's heard by someone, else, then you know what a value is <laughs> because it's, it's heard by. So, gentlemen, uh, let's start with you, Big Scott. What is for you, the, which value means the most for you what's the most important value and why and how would you describe it because as what i my experience is when we talk about values that people sometimes have a different interpretation of, of the value mm. i would say loyalty is is a hard thing to find these days do you know what i mean so people tend to give up easy too easy they don't fight through things um and in a business platform um getting people that you know will offer to say that they're going to do something and then they don't the people that actually put up and uh, shut up and put up um you learn through life for the the better people to be with um i also value uh, friendship you know good friendship you don't have to have many friends but um one or two trusted ones that you can trust your life with um are quite valuable to me um what else values uh, money's you know it, it it's a value it has a purpose but i wouldn't it it's not a necessity in my life um at my age as, as you get older you find the fundamental things that are, that are important is that you're around people that you care about and you can do things you know i've just become a trustee uh, for a, a local community group that are helping people uh, less poverty and i've just jumped on the helm to help them sort of with technical data and stuff and the value that i'm giving to that organization 
I get a buzz while I'm doing it for them because at the same time as I'm learning to do it for them, I'm also learning to do it for other aspects of, of, of my businesses and what I do as well. So uh, giving back, I think, whether you've got money or not, you can all dedicate a couple of hours, time a week to put back into your local community. You know, don't get detached. We, we've been detached for too long. And I think now we all need to do our, our little bit, you know, as certain brands will say every little helps and these days every little helps and that is a value that we've all got and i think we need to utilize more absolutely uh i want to pick a little bit deeper scott uh, you said okay loyalty you mentioned you mentioned friendship uh how does it feel or, what, or how do you react when somebody hurts uh, well I've got to the age now where if things go awry, then it's it's not my person. If, if it's something that I will done, then I will, I will confront it. But um, friendship is it's it's not supposed to be fickle. It takes a long, long time. You know, it's like a, a romantic relationship. If you have a best buddy relationship, then you share that same bond. And I think sometimes they can be broken over over trivialities. You know, so um, and especially as men, alpha males, you know, and I think as you get older, taking the alpha out of it. And yes, I, people pee me off, but I'm old enough, and mature enough now to walk away. You know, I think in the last five years, I've probably raised my voice twice, but I, I walk away and then I come back and I apologize. Whereas as a youngster, you wouldn't do that. You know, I'm in the right. Do you know what I mean? So I think you do learn uh, loyalty and friendship and that's not just what about that you're friends with your daughter friends with your your ex-partners friends with your friends with your employees you know um we live in a, a communication where there's so much to dis distract us but what we need to do is like i did the other day was i went back to samba drumming because as you guys are aware i had a, an operation nearly two years ago now but um i used to be really active with the samba band and i went back there yesterday and it was really nice to be with those people. And there was like four or five guys there and we just had a chat and we've like got over the proverbials. I haven't seen you, how you feel it? Oh no, a bit shit, do you know what I mean? Sat in the house doing nothing. It's nice to be out. We smashed the drums. I was so uh, excited about, I remembered all the beats and stuff. So this year I've got that family and I haven't had that family around me for a while and it's my musical family. You know, so and I know that I can go there and it's not just about beating the drum. We go to festivals together. They organize. We run our own nights and stuff. So I've missed that. So to be embraced again with open arms, that is that was very valuable to me. Do you know what I mean? So I was sat there thinking, well, they want me to come back. Is there a space for me? You know what I mean, you start thinking in your head, I've been away too long. Can I go back to it? And it was just like. I was sat in the car outside for about 10 minutes. Shall I go? Shall I go? Shall I go? And I went, fuck it. Got in there. Had the best time, best time, met faces that I haven't seen for ages. And again, within 10 minutes, I was the silly twat on the drum making everybody laugh. Do you know what I mean? So that's what it's all about, I think. Okay. I like that. I like that. Red, how about you? How about you? You're the youngest here in, in, in the panelists, but you have the longest experience of all of us. So what kind of values or did you do you also experience that there was a a change in your value system when when you're younger like a teen and then you as an adult and when you grow but you was there a change in your value system well i i think just to give you a little bit of a background uh 31 years in the military aviator uh invitation to vietnam invitation to bosnia so i have a background of being a flyer and in the military the Navy has a different culture and within the Navy, you have a different culture for the submarine force, for the aviation and for the surface. And they're all different. And even within the airplanes that you fly, there's a different culture. And so as you start spending years in that culture, you know, certain things are of value and certain things are, we just don't talk about that. We don't do that, whatever. Uh, I've been married 54 years and uh, still have a, a wonderful, you know, loving relationship with my wife. Uh, I retired in 07 and been an entrepreneur since. So I have my business that I'm doing there. I'm the oldest of nine kids, so I have a family relationship from that one. I've been to 61 countries in the world. Uh, so I have a kind of a different perspective than a lot of people because I've seen 
and worked and been involved with with other things. So I have kind of a little bit different than you know somebody who uh, never went in the military, went to school. I got five academic degrees, so I, in all different subjects. I never stayed the same. My first love was chemistry. I got a degree in that and never got a chance to practice it because of Vietnam. But I use it every day now for my research. And so things, you know, things happen for a reason. But for me, when I look at values and I, I think about that topic, you know, uh, honesty was already mentioned, but I think self-respect is, is partly, you know, if you're not true to yourself, then, you know, that is one. But, you know, self-respect, self-esteem, self-confidence, you know, those things are all intertwined. Uh, you know, the loyalty, uh, compassion, honesty, th those those all seem to go in there. But in the big scheme of things, uh, I think if you have self-respect and you have integrity, uh, I think you can live with yourself and be just quite happy, just uh, regardless of what's going on around you. Yeah, I think I totally agree with the self-respect and being an ex-military child and being ex-military myself, it taught me that. Um, and I think that's something that in civvy life, um, you'll understand what I mean by civvy life, um, they don't tend to have anything to direct them unless they go out and search in it. You know, I, I found the old footage of my passing out parade on YouTube and there's me all freshly skinned, you know, I remember I couldn't grow a beard. It was like, you've got three days to grow a beard or a mustache or it's gone, you know, and just all them memories come flooding back. And I think being a civilian, it take, uh, being ex-military, you learn a different loyalty and you know your neighbours, you know everybody in your street, on your squadron, you know, and exactly what you were saying about I was on Tatty Tun, so I was at the bottom of the airfield working on a craggy, any, any aircraft that didn't work, we were working on it, you know, but at the top end was all the senior NCOs in their, their swanky planes, you know, but when you're in the mess, you're all the same, you know, mm. so. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Yeah. I love what you said, Red. But you said you started with you know with, with self esteem, uh, self respect. I love that because I, I I also strongly believe when you don't respect yourself, how you can respect somebody else? When you don't love yourself, how can you love yourself? Uh, I guess it starts always with ourselves. So mm -hmm. people always very talking about always about others. I want to save the world. I want to save this. I want to <laughs> start with yourself. Yeah, and, and, and save yourself, yourself right. first. Yeah. Absolutely, that's so 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 absolutely important, and 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 because I I was asking uh, Red uh, this about uh, the change of value system because I made my experience when I was younger, but my value system was a little bit different. There is there I guess there are two core values. They are always important for me. They're still since my youngest age. It's, for me, it's freedom and independence. I was always I wouldn't call my a rebel, but for me. For, Somebody cuts down my freedom or my independence. I'm really pissed off. I'm really pissed off. Yeah. Okay. But I was in the military too. Of, of course, I can give up part of my, my, my freedom and part of my independence be because for, for common sense of a community, no doubt on that. But when somebody really cuts it down for, with no purpose, I'm really pissed off. So this is for me the, the core values. But I found out when, when, when I was thinking about in preparation of the show a little bit about reflecting about my life uh, the last 58 years it, there was a little bit change when i was younger there have been other values that are, have been more important that are not so important like now you know in the beginning when i was young it was, for me a value was very important to be uh in a very tough working hard you know making career stuff like that this career values mine is also a value was very important then i, I started my family raising raising three kids so protecting protection from a family family well has become more and more important now kids are out of the house i have more time for myself i work for more formal communities so my value system was a little bit changing but well but i think it evolves i think it evolves as you get older you if you experience lots and lots of things you it's trial and error and you know you can be led down the wrong path and you you learn something valuable from that you know what i thought was meaningful in my 20s well, oh my god you know going out getting wasted partying you know not going to work you know not part you know after a party not going home quick brush your teeth straight into work fall asleep on the desk you know that was well, important then but and then in your 30s your career is important do you know what i mean yeah. then in your 40s it's your family and then when they're all grown and then the importance is yourself 
you know, because yeah, you've got yeah. to reevaluate. You've been giving, giving, giving to everybody else. And the older you get, it's like, right, okay, my time is limited because you've got all your responsibilities. What am I going to do with that time? You know, so absolutely. Make so it I, useful I, and meaningful. Absolutely. So I found out there was a change, but what was surprised me, what little surprised me, but the common value, what I was going to say, the core values like freedom and independence and has always been there. Always been there. This never changed from, from my young age. Since I can think it back till now, this that that values like as I mentioned, freedom, independence, never ever changed. There were so. But you know something, Roland. Been... You mentioned earlier in life, and you know when I look at my my primary group that I I talk to a lot of my health and wellness stuff. You you grow, you have a family, you take care of them. They finally get out the door, and now all of a sudden you have a chance to take a breath, take a break, take a deep breath have a chance to, okay, really concentrate on your business. And then all of a sudden your parents start getting sick. So you have a very narrow window somewhere there in that 45 to 55 to almost 60, that if your parents are healthy, you have an extended period of time that you can enjoy life. But if your parents are sick, then all of a sudden you're taking care of them or you're worried about them all the time. Now, all of a sudden your focus is, I don't want to be in their shape when I get that old. You know, so mm -hmm. now you have to say, I need to take better care of my health. Well, you've had 50 years to take care of it, but for whatever reason, you always focused on something else. Mm -hmm. Now it's become right in your face because you can see it. It's it's right there. And then all of a sudden, you know, they pass on and you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to go the same way they did, particularly if there's something you know horrendous with regard to their health. But the times change. And when we were growing up in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever, you know, the music, the culture, the the values of society. Uh, society in Germany was totally different in the 60s and the value in the United States. You know, you had the Berlin Mall, you had all sorts of stuff going on over there. Uh, and if you were in uh, you know, Poland coming out post-World War II, there was still a lot of restrictions in that. You know, the travel that I did around in, in the Slavic countries, it, it's amazing some of the things that is still there. And sometimes they're for a reminder. You know, you, you see this building has got bullet holes in the wall. Well, there's a reason why that's there is, is a reminder. You know, it's in Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. They have bullet holes still in some of the buildings uh, there at the base because they want people to know this really happened. And when you go over to Fort Island, there's bullet holes through the windows in the hangar and you see mm -hmm. the striping on the ground. They did not cover that up. You know, so the value for that is, hey, history tends to repeat itself and we have a tendency to repeat ourselves, too. And so if we're really in, in smart about it and we're intelligent, you know, we want to improve, but sometimes we just don't quite have the awareness or the education to make that activity something I got to do. And uh, I can tell you from me getting a little bit older nowadays, uh, I have a second floor office and I got to hang on to that damn roll, uh, rail going down if I've been sitting here in this chair for a while because all of a sudden my legs just aren't working the way they used to. But uh, if I'm coming up and going back down, I don't have a problem. But but I'm noticing changes that uh, two, three years ago weren't there. Yeah, nature yeah. does that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Red, you, because you mentioned, you know, uh, there are different value systems, not only personal ones, individual ones, but also society ones, different countries, different cultures. I, I want to bring it on the next level. So it's, it's clear that we have values, some change, some state. Uh, Guys, from your experience in the UK or in the US, do you see there is a change, or it wouldn't, I wouldn't say a change, there is a dramatic crushing of the value system. One of my heroes, Professor Jordan Peterson, this Canadian uh, professor, he said uh, he's less concerned about wars worldwide, what's going on, the pandemic is more concerned that our value system is crushing. Mm -hmm. That we are changing mm -hmm. that. I give you a sample. Families are not so important anymore. You know, we have more individuals, we have more egos. We don't come together in family gatherings less and less. We don't have this, uh, I don't know, not what the dinner anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not not the Sunday dinners together. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. real. Uh, we even not, I, I don't know, US, but we're not allowed to say mom and dad. We have the breastfeeding part, the non breastfeeding. Part. We have all the shit, sorry, with the shit that is going on. Yeah, but that's that's the, that's the way the, the world ready. is. Yeah, that's well, the way the world is at the moment. Yeah, I think it's been a shift in the last twenty, maybe twenty-five years, and it's an incremental relativism. What was really important back then, you know, uh, a married couple is a man or a woman. We're seeing that shift where that is no longer have the same value, uh, relative uh, incremental moral uh, 
morals. I mean, with regard to abortion, uh, requ- I mean, it's just so many things that 25 years ago, no, we wouldn't, we would not a lot, but incrementally it's crept into society and became a norm and now it's being defended. And so what our values were way back when, and that way back when is just not that many decades ago, um, is being challenged on a, a daily basis. And so if you're a very religious person, you're saying, yeah, I, I can't do, but then again, everybody around you, not everybody, but um, many people around you are still espousing the the newness of this, or we got to change with the times or whatever may happen to be. And I think it can be very challenging for somebody who's not necessarily set in their ways, but, but has a relative uh, ability. Okay, fine. I understand what you're doing. But then all of a sudden that understanding isn't allowed to be, be voiced in some arenas per se. Yeah. You know, some people call me a rebel, a, a, a free spirit, and those who know me very well also call me very conservative because for me, core values are very, very important. But really, guys, do you do you think that our core values, you know, like family, are in danger nowadays? Well, they have the, our core values. It all goes down to families don't have enough time together. They're literally working their ass asses, asses off two, three, four jobs to keep a roof over their head. The dad's out all the time, uh, or the, the the breadwinner, should we say, because it's not the dad anymore as we live in a changing world. But um, whoever the breadwinner is, or both of the parents are breadwinners, or they're out constantly, so they don't even have time to come home. They don't even have time to sit down and have a meal. You know, especially in the UK now, um, I couldn't tell you the last time that families sat around a table as you say back in the day that's what we used to do every every day of the week there was fresh meat and two veg every day military styling you you were fed you ate what was in front of you you didn't have choice but oh my god i'm glad things have changed because certain things back then that i was forced to eat even now i can eat them but i still have a psychological memory about stuff like that so yes we are diversifying but um Values there. If you've got values, then you will have core values. You know, and it's, it's, it's you've got to split up these values, values and um, inherent attitudes that people have. Um, and in today's society, everything's technology based. So people are brave online. They don't speak face to face. So, um, but going back to families sitting around tables. It's not cost effective these days. They can't. People cannot afford to do it. You know, it's it's a it's a sad state of affairs. It's actually I know people that are in relationships, and it's actually better off for them to live apart than it is to live in the same household financially. You know, you bring up an interesting part about having food around the table and the family eating, and uh, that's the way I was raised. But as we get older, we notice that the changes that doesn't necessarily affect our values significantly, but we see those changes reflected in our kids and our grandkids because they are growing up in a different cultural world. Uh, there's a radio DJ here in Houston many years ago. He used to end every show with don't let anybody steal your joy. And I've never forgotten that. But one of the things that he mentioned, I think it's very germane to today's uh, topic, is the fact that he say, you know, one mother can raise 10 kids, but 10 kids can't take care of one mother. And, and that's so true in in the old days, you'd have grandma, you know, living with you until she passed on. Everybody be in and around or nearby walking distance. That doesn't happen. You know, the job now is, you know, somebody's in Sydney, somebody else is over in Kenya. It doesn't matter. They're somewhere, but the technology keeps them close together. But again, it's not necessarily eyeball to eyeball. Yeah, yeah. But I understand this, but uh, what my concern is, you know, I just brought it up family as, as a core value because a family is not only a value, the family is also the core of a society. It's the, it's the family, it's the tribe, it's a community, it's, 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 it's a country or a state or a society. So where, are we, where is society going when, fa- when family is not a, a core value anymore? Where is society going? Do we have more egos, or what you see, we have more nationalists? You know, countries are becoming more, especially in Europe, more nationalists. Uh, we have the European community, but it's not the really world, community. The world is angry, but it's angry at the wrong people. Mm. So, what you're happening now, we're living in technology where some pea brain prick can sit behind a camera and spout the most ridiculous diatribe in the world. There'll be people out there that are 
and so, you know want more and more of it back in our day you had the local news and then you put switched on the telly and you might have the national news now we can hear news from anywhere in the world instantaneously so i don't think the world is as bad as people make it out to be it's just we see and hear a lot more bullshit these days because there's so many different channels and unfortunately bullshit and separation sells you know that it's not about the industry is not about unity you name me one industry that's about uniting people mm -hmm. you know? you're very right uh, big scott on that one i know in the late 80s when we had access to the internet I could go find stuff going on almost anywhere in the world. Mm. And well, why isn't this being told here in the United States? And then when it finally did get there, well, they're only telling me a third of what's going on. They're they're cherry picking, cherry picking things. Yeah. And so at that point in time, I was involved with a whole bunch of stuff and it was real easy, you know, going to school, you know, four or five nights a week and being gone three weekends a month. I was able to, at that point in time, say, Hey, you know, uh, I don't need this. And I kind of just by default gave up watching news. Mm -hmm. And that was late '80s, and it, I didn't have a need for it. And I, that went through the the '90s, and the, um, and nowadays I'll look at headlines, and I'll rarely look beyond the first paragraph in anything. Yeah. And if you can't tell me what's going on very very quickly, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't need an opinion of what you think about it. I just need to know what 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 happened. And then, but when they start telling me this is what I should think about it. You know that to me they're putting their values onto me and that's not what i need i need yeah to be able that's to people preaching yeah there's people preaching onto you you know what i mean there's information i don't care what color race color creed denomination whatever you follow that's entirely up to you and i'll quite happily discuss it but don't preach it to me mm. do you know what i mean and i think that's today it's all about followers getting people to follow me follow me follow me so it's all about it, people aren't being genuine you know, a genuine person is when we sit next to each other because what we say is only 10%. The rest of it is body language. And so many things get misconstrued or misinterpreted because mm -hmm. it's not face-to-face. -face. It's snippets. But, you know, it's also you have the people who can't miss 10 o'clock news. I mean, before yeah, they yeah, go yeah. to bed, they have to have that hour's worth of whatever it was. I can't yeah. believe there's still old people walking down my street, you know, to get the papers in the morning. I was like, God, I thought that would all stop now, you know. But, <laughs> and so you have that culture that yeah. that's what that's where and they believe everything they hear and see. It's just exactly. Yeah. But as yeah. you said, it's 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 opinions, it's a lot of things. And people that's believe their comfort it. zone. That's their comfort zone. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. Absolutely they have a comfort zone, and so long as they're in it, they're happy. But don't you push them toward the edge of it because they're no they're... Yeah. and the thing we've got to realize in today's society there are as as you said earlier on red um there are people that are ingrained in them ways and you can't teach an old horse new tricks you know and i'm not saying we have to accept what people say but there's got to be a little bit of grace do you know what i mean so um, yes, we're living in a world that is it, it's separating and there's people against this, that and the other. But at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. You know what I mean? And that's respect. Whatever we decide to follow, you know, nobody's perfect. If you want to be a flat earther, that's entirely up to you. You know what I mean? You could laugh at my philosophies. Who, who, who says what's what and what's right? And it's harder these days to filter through what is right and what's not you know people will click through i like you read i'll i'll read something if it engages me i'll read it all the way through then i'll post it you know a couple of times and it's hard a couple of times i've seen something without looking for oh yeah that's attracted to me clicked it and then before, as soon as i've clicked it somebody's put a negative comment on it and i'm like do you know what bang delete it i don't need that mm -hmm. you know but people oh you've put a bad comment i'm going to reply to that bad comment and there's this sense of false bravado you know so it's a, we live in a miscommunication technology uh, as, a, as opposed to a, a communication technology because it's being well, used I, in the wrong ways. I think we live in a negative miscommunication yeah. because the negativity well, that's what's of being, news yeah. is 80% yeah. you know, of what we see in here in most yeah. cases. Well, bad news. You know, I did journalism course. Bad news sells. Nobody Absolutely. wants to be listened to good news. You know, oh, Joe down the road won two and a half million pounds. Oh, Ethel won 300 quid at bingo. You know, within 10 minutes, you're turning it up because you feel inferior, you know? Yeah. So, but, but, yeah. but, but the point is people love bad news because they make it interesting thing is they make feel them good because yeah. oh Ooh, no, no. it could have been me oh 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, lucky. Yeah. Uh, airplane was down, was down in the Hindu Kush. Hundred people died. Oh, luckily I couldn't afford a ticket. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the point. People feel they feel good. So I'm safe. Didn't happen to me. Yeah, people love yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah absolutely it's a hard world you know but as you say you've got to stick to your core values and don't preach on anybody as long as you're happy and you're not hurting anybody else then what's fucking wrong with whatever you do now if somebody says why do you believe that now you can preach because they've given you permission yeah. for you to tell them why do you believe this yeah exactly uh, and, and, if and somebody's i quite out there and honestly like, say oh i'm quite interested to listen about what you're saying but it's the way that people deliver it's like well i'm doing this and you should do but if you I like to listen because I'm a I do radio and I do journalism. I like to listen, try and get a little bit of a grasp, and then play devil's advocate. You know, mm -hmm. so but some people don't like that. You know, if you if you start questioning their beliefs, you think you're, you're questioning them. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's it, it's a hard thing, but that all comes down to knowing who you are, as you said, Red. Do you know what I mean? Be true to yourself, and then the rest of the world will just fall into place. Hopefully, you know? absolutely. And yeah, this is to something to do with respect, you know, respecting somebody else's opinion yeah? mm -hmm. and respecting it. But I also want to understand this. So I, 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 whatever communication I have with somebody, conversation uh, with different angles, with uh, somebody's on the left, on the right, black, blue, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. I, I remember uh, I was had a communication, a long conversation with somebody, and I make it made it public, and then people get, gave a shit storm on me on facebook say, how can you talk to and invite a right wing person mm -hmm. said, what's the problem no but that's what but it's about yeah, 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 yeah. i'm not interested in, in his politics i'm interested yeah. in this person I had, an, I had an amazing conversation with this person it was interesting it was controversial of course but it was respect uh, how can you how dare how dare you <laughs> how dare you how can you do this uh, why not why yeah, i equate not? it to you put a table in front of say between me and Scott, and in the middle of the table, there's a big number. I see it as a six. He sees yeah, it as a nine. a nine. Yeah. And we're both. I mean, it is exactly what our value system say. That's what we see. That's our interpretation based on our our psyche and our education. Well, it becomes indoctrined, and I think that's where yeah. the problem becomes when you and, become indoctrinated because then you can't separate yourself from yeah. the the belief or whatever you know. Yeah, so. But what Roland's saying is, he sees my six, and well, I see it as a six. Yeah. But that doesn't have anything to do with, hey, let's talk about this or that. You know, a six yeah. or a nine. Yeah, they're different numbers. But I'm not getting emotionally involved because he yeah. believes it's a six. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's part of the issue is the fact that sometimes we do equate people's beliefs mm -hmm. that are genuinely separate from their the rest of But we see them as that belief and nothing else. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's also, you know, I remember one of the shows before, I don't know, maybe just cut you remember that Christian and I, we had a very con controversial discussion on, 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 on two topics on, on the previous shows. And afterwards, he came back to me and said, Roland, I'm sorry. But I said, I loved it. I mean, when I mean, we're all the mm -hmm. same opinion, we don't learn from each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it has but to be on, on a respectful level, of course. On a, respectful a good level. debate, a good debate sometimes yeah. gets really, really heated. You know, yeah. some people's like, calm down, calm down. It's like, I'm not getting angry. I'm just getting animated, you know? And people can't, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. but um, people can't take that. Do you know what I mean? They take it as a, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, so. yeah. It's good to have a controversial a, a debate with passion. Life would be boring. Life would be good. boring if we all at the same gray yeah, shit every day, you know? Absolutely. Uh, what can we do to bring, to help other people's, or, or, or my, my question is always when I, when I, I do coaching with clients, I said, okay, what is important? Which values are important for them? And I said, okay, this, this, and this. And I, my question is always, how how do you give space to your community, to your family, that these values can really be brought alive for everyone that surrounds you? you what know, are you when against the forty minute time limit? I'd say that's a, probably a really good topic to get into. Maybe next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess that, that's that's a good suggestion, Red. Maybe we, we go we continue this discussion and and go go how we can make this values for everyone around us because it's nice when we have values, but what does it mean to our family members? Well, how how do you add value to your community? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Yeah.
Good to see you. Welcome Good aboard, Brett. Good to see you, Brett. Thanks, Brett. I enjoyed it. Thank you all very much, and we'll catch you next week. Catch yeah. you next week. And for our audience, please, uh, when you missed one of the shows, all the recordings, all this, also this show is recorded, will be automatically seen on our website, bonfiretalks.com. And there you get more information about the show and the background. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Same same time, same procedure. Place, next place, Wednesday, same time. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye. We're going this way. Nope. We're going this way. <laughs>